Okay, uh, yeah, thank you very much, Dan, for the introduction. Uh, can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you. That's fine, thanks. Yeah, so yeah. usually I start my talk yeah. with motivation, right? Why, why do we need to model the interactions? But here, I guess, um, I mean, we all know why do we need that. So I basically talk about the meet, about all the different tools and methods which we developed for this. And specifically, I will focus on three problems. One is modeling of uh, globular protein-protein interactions. Second one is the modeling of proteins with SLIMs, uh, small linear peptide motifs. And finally, our recent work on modeling uh, protein ligand interactions. So generally, I mean, we use um, physics-based modeling. So we are trying to model the physics of the system. So we're trying to find global minimum uh, of free energy of, of the system. And we are trying to come up with effective methods and approaches which allow us to do it extremely effectively and quickly. So the general uh, overview of the approach uh, is actually we use a multi-scale approach where we first use a um, model which is representing proteins uh, or uh, if it's flexible protein an ensemble of states on some soft rigid bodies on the grid where we can systematically will evaluate all possible mutual interactions of one body with respect to another and calculate uh, approximation of partition function of entire system. So for this simplified problem, we can exactly sample all configurational space and find the regions which are most likely to be the binders and turned out to be that this is actually works um, extremely well for many um, applications. And the way how we validate it, you may definitely heard about CASP experiment for protein folding, where there was this exciting uh, recent news on progress in the model homology models. So there is a kind of sister competition called Capri, where actually you model complexes uh, of protein-protein interactions. And basically that's where we validate and test uh, our models. So how, um, how does the method works? So we look actually at the global systematic search, uh, as we discussed, of two proteins placed on the grid. We have to smooth a little bit our potentials because we, our coordinates are not exact because protein is a little bit wobbly and change the conformation as compared from unbound state where it's crystallized on its own compared to bound how it is in the complex. And if it's a big conformational change, we need to look at the ensemble of conformations. But when, once we place this all um, on the grid, we can express interaction energy functions. That's now another approximation as a sum of convolution type expressions. And so you would ask why do you need that? And this is done for efficiency purposes because if you have like a convolution, you can very effectively calculate it using uh, fast Fourier transforms. And the question is that is it a valid approximation for molecular mechanics interaction questions? And the answer is sometimes definitely yes. And sometimes you can get a good approximation. So the natural example is for example, electrostatics where which can be expressed as convolution of the charge grid with the pot uh, electrostatic potential grid, that's a natural single convolution. But some other terms like salvation, van der Waals may require kind of several convolutions, but this is in principle um, can be done and that can, and you can basically map something like charm or amber force field to the grids with some smoothing at approximation to calculate, um, to calculate such interactions. So that's basically like the, um, sample terms of our energy functions, which have and, and Van der Waals, electrostatic, salvation, and we continuously working and approving different terms for different environments like membranes and others. So, okay, so what, that what I told that the key of the method is actually you can solve exactly this approximated plural. You can sample all configurations of the system and calculate uh, partition function of the most probable region. So the lowest energy region, which has a big, large number of neighbors, which correspond to potentially good funnel uh, of this model and turned out to be that even despite all these approximations, these models are often kind of a good um, approximations for actually for the correct as uh, interaction, pro so, so I mean, protein interaction problem. So actually this method due to efficiency with FFT um, is actually is pretty fast. So you can, uh, you can do it pretty quickly. And so we do actually it not just for our own group and also we give out the program, but also we provide people with a server because it's actually pretty easy to use. You provide here, like in the simplest form, you provide the two structures, two structures, and press doc, and it does a initial docking of two protein 
uh, models, but actually if you have more information, we actually we have we have an advanced mode which I will talk more about, which provide you additional things what you can do with that. So the detailed description also is provided in the publication. So the server is actually is, is pretty heavily used. It has around 20,000 users, more than 100,000 jobs run just in the last year. So it's kind of, and as a matter of policy, we are not looking at the, at your individual jobs. So basically if you create your account, you, we don't look at the job itself, but we do actually collect the statistics just for reporting purposes to say like to NIH or other funding energies, uh, agencies, okay, I mean, we are giving us money for something useful. So for example, I mean, and for statistics, it's actually, it's fun to look at just to see, for example, the patterns of usage of, uh, of protein docking server. As, for example, that's a daily graph and you can see there is a clear periodicity with the seven days period that basically people are submitting most of the jobs kind of on the midweeks, right? And with minima, on kind of on weekends, it's true, I guess, for all types of activity. Yeah, the yearly graphs is less interesting, like I guess it connects to the academic kind of like um, academic year, like you see the summer is a little bit depressed, but then since I guess holidays are too short, right? I mean, like it is, it is actually, there is no deep, almost no deep in, in the winter. Yeah, and you can ask, okay, I mean, yeah, it's fast, it's good, it's used, but, but how useful it is? As said, we continuously validate it in uh, Capri and actually Capri motivates us to actually to improve the methodology continuously. So this is a snapshot of some different examples of models which the server produced. So like, I guess the blue one is, um, um, uh, the blue one is a crystal and the green one is the models. And sometimes you see it's quite accurate, sometimes not so, but, but many times it actually provides uh, some useful data. And in some cases actually, uh, although we do provide people a tool to use an additional experimental information, but sometimes if that information is, is wrong, using server on its own is also useful. For example, in this case, the data was actually that this interaction was happening with the zinc finger domain in the top, but turned out to be that information was wrong, right? And, and actually majority of people who participate in this uh, docking competition provided incorrect solution, but since server was run in a initial mode, it produced a solution which was correct, I mean, because it didn't use the experimental data. But of course, I mean, yeah, if you have a good data, definitely you should use it. And just to summarize, and that's the performance of Class Pro in the recent rounds, um, 2013, 2016, and it is consistently kind of doing like on top of server performance. And actually it is quite competitive together with a human competition. So that's the results, uh, sorry for the quality for the recent Capri assessment round from the, um, um, like which was like was held in uh, England um, in 2019. So again, Class Pro is doing kind of like the best um, in terms of performance and it's quite close to the best uh, top groups. So, um, so yeah, so I was talking about that actually is a simple way, right? If you don't know anything, you can run it in a Benicia mode and it can actually, if you have separate structures of your uh, interaction you're interested in, but if you have more data, actually you can try to use it. And so you can provide, uh, I guess, of what of interest, and I will talk more about it. You can provide uh, different ways of restraints. So basically distances between the residues which you want to keep close. And we have actually some special method for that, which is, um, uh, which I think is quite useful. If you do, if you do like small angle X-ray scattering, you can also use it. There is, you can upload your SACS profile. And again, we see that it's in principle, it's useful for protein docking modeling. It can model some other macromolecules. Um, it can model um, RNA as a receptor. I mean, we did it as for one Capri mode, so we are no, not guaranteeing that it will be working as well as protein, protein part, but you can use it. It does work for modeling affligants as heparins. You can try the two, right? I mean, it's definitely good at finding binding sites, sometimes actually quite decent uh, molecular details. Uh, also, people find useful the antibody mode if you're in, in kind of doing some biologics or modeling like your interactions. Here we have a special optimized mode for modeling antibodies which work, uh, which work pretty well. So um, yeah, just, just as I mentioned, I guess like if you kind of work with experiments, right, you definitely would have a restraints from either from biochemistry 
or like from uh, like or from Anamar or from some other um, other tools. And actually, like usually, like what people do with dealing with the restraints, right? They use them basically as some form of a harmonic springs to just pull things together. But we felt that actually sometimes it is a little bit artificial, right? You are skewing the real interaction energy landscape. So the way how we deal with it is is in a different manner. Uh, the way kind of as I describe you, you can systematically sample configurational space uh, of the problem. So we don't need kind of to do this kind of pooling, right? We can actually sample everything and then just physically check, okay, other restraints are satisfied for this particular orientation. And we can do it systematically. So in this way, so in our approximation, we can give you all the answers which guarantee satisfy your restraints. And sometimes I feel it's interesting because it kind of guarantees that you're not pulled to the region, but you actually explore everything and report only things which are relevant. So it's a, so we make it convenient. So there is a special restraint generator where you can insert your restraints, the distances, and it is, it is quite good. So here I'm showing like some, some of the complicated Capri case where actually like you can just use some separately crystallized components. Uh, I think it was this polycomb repressor um, a protein uh, and then basically it was able to provide with very, very few restraints, actually very high accuracy, um, high accuracy model. So as I told you, the modeling is actually like is physics based inspired. So, so you can use it not just to do the modeling of the complex, but actually also sometimes answer some kind of uh, biophysical questions. So one here I'll show an example. It's not part of the server, but it, it was the method was used actually to predicting and counter complex so intermediate states of proton protein association, which was measured by NMR and then compared to the uh, ensemble free docking ensemble of our approach. But the reason I bring it to you, like in terms of uh, practical use, we actually have a special mode of the server called Class Pro DC for biological validation of um, crystallographic models. You would ask, okay, why do you need that? There is PISA, uh, there is uh, like which is using like an analysis of the surface of the protein. There is EPIC, which uses coevolutionary information, but actually direct docking with the physics-based potential of, of a crystallographic model actually also provides you some additional information. It answers you, okay, does this protein complex comes together on its own without kind of all the effects of a crystal contact, contacts and, and everything. And actually, I think this idea was at some point was um, explored by Eugene. I saw there was, here, there was one paper. I mean, so here we basically use this type of kind of potential, I mean, our physics-based potential for looking at the model. And where we try to see, okay, whether it's useful at all, actually we look at the so-called PISA difficult set where PISA kind of had, because PISA measures kind of like energetics, I mean, it, it tries to like bigger surfaces. And sometimes you know that these bigger surfaces are on, like shown on the right. And sometimes small interfaces actually are quite, uh, are quite good. So the people have specifically created this PISA difficult set where actually they had these complexes which are, uh, which would be difficult to, to discriminate with this method. And actually direct docking like did a quite a good job of, uh, of it. And we feel that actually it can be in addition to PISA and EPIC can be used basically um, kind of another kind of like opinion on, on validity of the bi biologics of the interface. And I think that's kind of the mode uh, which, which it can be used. So yeah, the rest details of this publication is published and so you can use it with, with the server. So our uh, experience with this is basically, obviously PISA and EPIC is much faster, right? You just need to look at the single confirmation. So if sort of they agree, then you're, it's okay, right? But if, if there is a disagreement, Class Pro DC can be a kind of a tiebreaker to see basically the different angle and answer, okay, uh, sort of what is, yeah. Uh, um, yeah, and also it's actually interesting that uh, we see that such approach actually can be adapted to models and can tell you about if you have some interface based on the homology model actually to tell you which one is more likely and things like that. So we are working actually on a server mode for this. So yeah, so also as I mentioned to you, so this convolution type, uh, so the key here idea is express interaction in form of convolution type expression and actually Turns out to be you can express things in convolution form, not just for energies, but also some um, observable measures. For example, things like small angle X-ray scattering. I mean, like you can express the intensity of scattering of two bodies which, were, which are moving around each other in, in terms of some kind of fixed terms. 
and also a convolution-like term. Actually, this original expression was, achieved, uh, was uh, obtained by, uh, by Dmitry Svergo's group, but I think the method is called Masha. But basically what we shown that actually with our FFT base, actually here you need to use an FFT not for classical Cartesian FFTs, but special generalized FFTs. So actually you can accelerate this calculation and you can systematically calculate Sachs profile for two kind of like two objects rotating with each other globally and systematically. And then again, it can be fed as a filter to our docking approach and that actually, it actually works extremely well. So unlike other methods, I mean, like we can actually systematically calculate Sachs profile for all possible mutual orientations of two. Um, of two bodies, and you can uh, you can use it through the server. So so far we talked about of the main the main interactions where there is a conformational change, but it's not kind of that huge. There are small details, but globally things are not changing. What about completely flexible interactions, say protein peptides, right? Where where basically it is really kind of uh, fully flexible. So we fo we focused in the beginning before started dealing like we're trying to target obviously the final problem, the full interaction of the protein with unstructured protein, but at this point we are looking at the interaction of protein with slims. We know that all the peptides can be reduced to small linear interaction motif where basically you have a short piece which is binding and removing that piece will totally abolish the binding. And at the same time, the slim on its own actually can, can bind to the protein. So why focusing on slims? Because we feel, okay, that's something which is the most definite on the interaction and that would be the most um, easiest to model. So the way how we approach it actually, we decided, I mean, like we know that it's generally the challenge actually to simulate um, even for shorter peptides to simulate unbound conformational samples. So what was our hypothesis that actually peptides, at least in slim region, are behaving very similar to, to kind of to general PDB itself. So, so we, we extract conformational ensemble of samples for the particular five to 10 residue long uh, peptide directly from PDB and creating a clustered ensemble out of there. So the idea, um, so yeah, so, so that, of course you can say like actually you cannot really get longer if you want to have particular full se sequence piece, you cannot just get it from PDB. You need to introduce some kind of uncertainty and that's actually easy to do, right? Because slims actually do have motifs, right? You know that it's FXXF, so you know which actually residues are non-important. And once you introduce this axis, you can easily sample your five, five, seven, ten length piece. And as you can see that here is a benchmark of interactions, actually this uh, these real interactions are not alpha helix or beta sheet like they basically have the extended conformation and turns out to be the monomer kind of just some taking pieces of PDB doesn't really matter from where from uh, from uh, like from interactions or not is actually does a quite a good job so that's an overview of the approach so basically you have a receptor and you have like and you extract from PDB an ensemble of peptide conformation you globally dock this ensemble with the same method and you obtain the results. So that's basically the steps of the approach. It's a really global uh, approach and actually it produces you actually quite accurate models which are, uh, which as Capri kind of consider them to be quite good. And we also show that we can, if you have more computational resources and can be refined to actually to really high accuracy uh, resources. But this part is actually available through, uh, through Class Pro, so you can use it. Um, for you, so what about protein ligand docking? So protein ligand docking is also like an uh, important problem for drug discovery, and it's also a challenge. So NIH recently created another competition called D3R, similar to Capri actually, to see how well things are working. And here kind of we focused actually on one, uh, we, we developed also the global protocol, but also like many problems in this challenge actually were coming where ligands were relatively similar to something which is available in PDB. And so we created a template-based approach where we actually start with, uh, with the model which is with part of the ligand which is similar to what we have in the PDB and then down, do some very effective local refinement. And this works actually extremely well. So in several rounds of competitions, there was actually many groups are participating. And this is, for example, the result of the latest round, D3R Grand Challenge 4 where actually like uh, this is mean RMSD of the predicted models. There was something like 20 molecules to model. And our group did a prediction, which is here. So we had like a mean RMSD of 0 0.76 uh, angstrom. So basically it's a 
uh, almost crystallographic uh, accuracy for 15 of 21 models of our sub one extremes. So, so actually, so that worked pretty well. And we developed a server for people to use it. So you can actually try to use it for your ligand, um, ligand modeling. So, so just, I mean, I, I then asked me to talk mostly about the class pro. I would just say that we have another resource called FTMAP, which can analyze your crystal structure on important functional sites. So for example, to assess, can it be draggable in the site of interest? It's again, there is a server and there are details described in the, um, in here where you can actually see how to use it. But just to highlight, there is a draggability analysis of finding allosteric or cryptic sites. So the way kind of what the method is doing is actually looking at the interaction of protein with a small organic solvents. It's actually, there is a soaking type experiment, which for example, I think right now, uh, it's, it's heavily done kind of like in diamond facility for getting this information of soaking a protein crystal with all these different type of fragments. And uh, you can, you, but this, this is computational analog of this approach and actually it can provide you a lot of uh, useful, uh, interesting information. And also just kind of to talk about what we are doing right now, what we are trying to get the server is actually combining protein, protein, protein ligand docking for high accuracy modeling of drugs called Protox, where basically you have a ligand which actually binds to target to ubiquitin ligase and have a linker which brings two protein interaction complexes together. So that's some kind of active work which we hope we can have some server uh, soon on this. Um, for antibodies, I mentioned to you, many people are using server for modeling antibodies and finding epitopes, but the real challenge is we don't have unbound structures of antibodies. We usually have sequences. So what we show is that actually we have an ensemble based method where we build multiple models of the, uh, of the antibody. And actually like when we look at the docking of the field to all together, we can better predict the epitope with accuracy, which is almost similar to the unbound structure of the antibody. So that we'll get the server for that soon. And yeah, and then leak TBM, we further improve it. I mean, like, so for example, that just it cannot be done on the server yet, but actually this is, for example, the model of Remdesivir in complex of the RDRP, which was done two weeks before the release of the CryoEM structure. So actually, so that was kind of, we were quite happy that actually you can, you can do this type of things. So I guess this is kind of things here I wanted to cover. And yeah, I would be happy to answer your questions, so.